Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today we have a GeForce uh, 2 Pro. This was actually gonna be a video about replacing the RAM on this card because I had this card for quite some time. Uh, the problem with this card is artifacting quite badly at post, so it's kind of useless. And I bent over this card like visually and measuring and stuff. There's a lot of uh, resistor arrays at the back, a lot of caps, and uh, a handful of the front too. So I bent over it like probably three times and didn't find anything obvious. No missing components, no obvious cracks or anything. So I s well, wrote it off as having bad memory chips, and it might have, I don't know. But uh, later, I got this card, it's a GeForce 4MX uh, 440, and uh, the RAM on this card I figured was maybe compatible. So I looked it up, and uh, they use the same voltage, 2.3 volt, but this has like a different IO voltage of 2.5, it's called VDDQ, and uh, this one has 3.3 volt for that also. So I was uh, figured that wouldn't work, might work, and the reason why. I think it would have worked, or will, could work, is because this card, like a, uh, this is a Pro, but the TI version I found with the same memory chips as this one. So, my plan was then after like having this on the shelf for like six months to try those chips on. I was actually trying this card out just to make sure it's still posted at all and so on, and was going to film the card artifacting, which we're gonna do anyway, so you can see it. But while doing that, I discovered something that I have missed before. So I don't think we actually need to replace the RAM on this one. I don't think this RAM is broken. I think I found a fault. But we're gonna have to confirm by doing a repair, obviously, because it's broken. So let's show what the problem is with the card and uh, how I think I discovered a fault so we can uh, try to repair it. Also, uh, this card has really bad caps. And I, I did put on not new caps, well new caps, but I, what they do sometimes when you use the bin cards to figure out what's easy to repair and what's gonna be hard. So I want to find the ones that maybe have bad caps, so I just usually just use a normal uh, throw hole mounted cap and saw the one to the bad ones. And so I have like a, I usually have a small stash of temporary caps. So I did it on this card too, it had no effect. Usually what happens when the caps go bad is that the card kind of works, but when you run 3D they tend to crash. And that way you can quite easily bin them if, if they work with temporary caps uh, through 3D Mark for like overnight. You, you know, it's it's worth just recapping. So you can order caps and stuff. So anyway, I tried that. So we're gonna have to replace the caps if we fix the actual fault with the memory. Because it is memory related uh, somehow. So let's put it in a test system and uh, show you the artifacting and uh, how I think I found the problem and how we're gonna fix it. So I have the graphics card here hooked up and the monitor. And let's see, exit menu. So I got the connection to D sub, so VDA. So I'm gonna turn it on now. Hopefully, get a picture here. to the bias. You probably already can see the problem here is quite severe artifacting. Uh, see. So we got the uh, basically lines missing and interference pattern. So obviously not very usable and uh, doesn't work. Uh, I don't think you can maybe get into Windows without drivers but with drivers if I recall it's probably garbage. So let's see if we can replicate what I did. So Let's see here. Yeah, you can see now I'm touching the card in the in a special place. So I'm gonna show you later where I touched it. But basically using your fingers, and they should not be too dry. Uh, and basically touching a card, either front or back. And eventually if you if you have Something like say, I, ha I had this problem when the Voodoo 2 I built from scrap, scrap 
Well, I eventually found a problem on that one. And also cracked resistor on that one. So right now I'm actually touching a resistor. And that was also for the memory subsystem. And the thing is, my capacitance, my fingers, or my conductivity, whatever, causes bitter rot. Uh, so we're sending random one and zeros to the frame buffer. It seems, because we're pulling stuff high and low, it seems. So, something seems to be off between the memory and the GPU. So let's uh, take a look at the card and uh, troubleshoot a bit. Here we have the card again. So let's take a look at the back. And I got my multimeter out, see if we can get that in the picture here. Set it to ohms, resistance. And then I'll see here. So we're out of line now. It works. So, where I started poking around was on the back side of the GPU. So here, that's where I noticed the, the artifacting changing. So I poke around here, and there's a lot of exposed bias, the conductive, still doing the same thing. But there was nothing down here, and there was nothing up here. So I kept going, and got to here, a couple of sisters here. And like I said, I measured them all like two, three times. The problem sometimes is that you can't read the code, and codes on them. And sometimes they just give values you think are sane. So let's just probe some of them here. So we're gonna start here. See if I can get my hand out of the way. Let's start on this one. And it reads 50, and it says 150 on that one. And if you run that through a online uh, SMD decoder for these things, they say the same thing. And that's also 115, so 15 ohms. And there are a mix, there are, let's see here, 437. That one reads 70, 750, so I think that's 75. So the fact that it reads lower might indicate you have something else we measure in circuit. So contrast that. That's another 150 for 14. And then we got another one here, 750, so for 37. And then we got this one. Nope, I'm still not there yet. Sorry. So that's another 150 for 14. And let's see this one then. Here's another 750. And then we got this one. And for some reason now it reads out of line. <laughs> Didn't do that before. Might have broken even more then. Uh, well, let's do that. Uh, 1100. And I got like 1002, something like for It's actually gone up. The card is warm now. So probably when I poked around before and I had it in diode mode just to get a beep. Because most of us are low value that you get a beep. And uh, we didn't get a beep on that one now, it's kind of funny because I've been over them. And that's the thing, I had the same problem with the, the Voodoo 2, it measured fine when I did like this. And my Voodoo 2 that I repaired. And the thing is, I suspected when I pushed at it like so, that I, that made the Voodoo 2 resistor array. To one of these black ones over here, and that's a resistor array, you find them on all kinds of electronics. Basically, four resistors in parallel, not connected to each other, just for compactness. So I think what happened is I just assumed this was a thousand ohms, but actually I downloaded a picture as close as I can get to this card uh, with the same PCB layout and um, even with very high res picture it's hard to tell, but since I know what this most likely is going to say that it's 750 or 150 on it, I can deduce that this is probably 150. It should measure 15 ohms and we set this to 2000 ohms. Uh, and get out of line. So that one is probably broken. And the only, well, there's a couple of ways to con confirm that, removing it or putting it under a microscope. Because if it's actually broken, it should be visibly cracked, but it doesn't have to be. I have, uh, have a resistor arrays being so, and these black ones have like hairline fractures, and, like you can barely see them. But if you put some hot air on them or take a soldering iron to them, and drags out of them, they usually ship a corner or something. So that's one way you can find them. You can, if you have the time, you can either hot there or just take iron and go over. If you, if you want fresh up your solder joints anyway, because they oxidize something, that's one way of finding cracked SMD components, the ceramic ones. 
So let's put this under the microscope and see what we can see. So we're under the microscope here, and I'm gonna need to find something to poke with. So let's get a tupic here, poke something. So this is a resistor, right? So they, they actually, there are like um, four of these. So it's quite common for one, a corner to crack, and you might not even see it. So if it drags harder, like this, it should fall off. But even that uh, tricked me sometimes. So hot air, they just tend to disintegrate. So yeah, if you suspect these, you can go over and like put the hot air or soldering iron. So here's like a nice looking 150, it's upside down obviously in this one too. And you can ignore the zero. So it's 15 ohms. It's a 750 on the right side, uh, correct orientation for us to read. It's not important orientation here, you can see 750, 150. Let's get over here. So here we've got 750, and this is actually partially shipped, so we should probably, maybe, place that, uh, just in case. This one is shipped, so we can't actually read the letter in here. But like I said, I find pictures on VGA Museum that seems to indicate this is a 150. Uh, so I think we should put that. I would assume it's 150 because all of these are that, but when you get over to here, both are that 150. But there's no two 750s in one place so yeah i'm gonna go with the 150 here so we're gonna remove this first and i'm pretty sure if we tilt it like so and do some focusing let's see if that doesn't look cracked then i don't know what is so let's see here if i can find it a typical yeah, intact one nice and straight and then look at the bottom there and the top corner there this one is dead, I can guarantee it. So when we take hot air to this, it should fall apart. Uh, yeah. So let's do that. Beginning with the broken one, let's see what's happening here. Yep, so that was broken, as I suspected. So this is a 680, so it's not 750, it's going to be 68 ohms instead. You can actually measure the old one and see if it actually was uh, 75 ohms. I don't have a 75 apparently, but yeah, I think it should be fine. I did a similar thing on a booted tree not long ago, and it works fine to go up or down one step. The problem is if you go way outside, like on memory stuff and things like that, they, they tend Things get unstable and not working properly. So I just measured that one, 750 to 77 ohms. So the, the, the fact that I measure around 40 ohms is because it's in the circuit. So let's add back the top one here. Many poles of flux. I need to get my resistor here. Try to get it. Ideally right side up, not that it matters, but it looks better. It should flow in place if it's close enough. Let's see if that flows in place. This is the 150 I think should go there. 
that's the close. Since we don't know what was there before, I have to go by what I can find on the internet. Just gonna clean it up a little bit here. Just pouring down on the V in the AGP connector. This flux is not conductive, so the Samtech flux is non-conductive. No clean flux, but because it's non-conductive, it's so isolating, it's actually gonna stop. Like if we get it on the AGP connector, it's not gonna work, and you won't even see a smudge that will do that. So gonna clean it up. So let's uh, try it out and see if it works. So I've hooked up the card again. So let's turn it on. Got signal and I can read the text. So let's get into the BIOS. Looks good so far. I see no problems with the text here. Fan. And the fan sounds like garbage. So, as you can see, the BIOS looks proper. No issues here. So, next step would be a total recap of the card. So, we can actually stress test it because the current caps are swollen and bad. Taking off the IO bracket and the SVD out. So, let's see if we can remove these caps. Uh, use some hot air this time, see how that works. I want to save the base, the uh, plastic base on this big one, you'll see why later. So for new caps I have, we need 22 microfarads, uh, 16 volts if I recall, these are 16 volts, 22, and then we need some 10 microfarads, uh, like 16 volts, and these are 35, so fine. I do not have the suitable uh, SMD version of this, uh, I actually had a kit for this card, but since this was kind of written off for a long time, uh, it ended up on another card. But I have a plan. I want to use these. These are 1200 microfarads, and this one is a uh, thousand, so it's fine. But my plan was to use the base out of this and put one of those through because that's basically what it is. Uh, see the legs are bent on the other side. So I think we can make a radial mounted, uh, well, that's SMD mounted one or a radial mounted one. That's my plan because I'm cheap right now. Not intentionally, but I don't want to wait, plus I'm not going to put in an order in a little while until I get another project in from a friend. 
And motherboard, I think he want to recap, then I figured I order stuff, so can always change this later, but uh, yeah, this must actually be superior cap anyway. Definitely better than the dead one. So I'm just gonna unbend these, I figured, and see if I can get this base off. Yep, works. So basically, now that's a throw hole mounted one, very broken one. And yeah, this is 10 volts, 1000 microfarads, so I think the new ones were 10 volts too, where I put them. I put them in front of me. But 1200, but that should be fine. So my plan is to repurpose that. Uh, about as clean as it gets. So, just do it like so, and then see if we can bend these tightly. They are they are flattened, but I'm not gonna try to bother with that. I'm just gonna bend them. I think that will be good enough, and push it against the table a little bit. I think it should work. So now we got our. Converted to SMD, should be able to fit nicely here. Just need to cut off the excess, as they say. And a dab of glue. Just to secure it a little bit better so it doesn't uh, wiggle around, I figured. And the reason I preheated it is because uh, I don't want the, gl the glue to just uh, like go cold and harden instantly. This is pretty firm, but should be perfectly removable with heat or just rip it off. Because uh, yeah, if you dissolve it with hot air, it just comes off with the, the glue with, the, with everything else. So future repair no problem so let's solder this in if I put on my iron here A little bit hard to get to this one. But it's there now. So that's one cap in. The rest to go. So yeah. Maybe not the most professional solution, but well, for me, it's good enough for me. This cap should be more than good enough. So. And it's way better than a dead one. So now we need to replace the rest of them. So I'm gonna thin this pad here. I'm gonna add the first cap there. 22 microfarad. And let's think. So yeah, hot air, uh, board heater would probably help here, and hot air would also work, you can hot air these on, but uh, yeah, I, I'm more afraid of cooking them, so. Inspected the card, not the most beautiful soldering I've ever done, but it uh, will have to do, caps are there, I'm just gonna do some cleaning, gonna clean the card uh, in water too. I'm gonna scrub away the flux on the worst of it before I clean it. And then we can uh, remount the fan and 
test it and install some drivers and actually see if we can game on it. Something. Run some 3D Mark, I figured. So, yep. So, I have uh, installed a card and uh, uh, this is my test drive. So, drivers are installed automatically. And I have had uh, NVIDIA card in the system before. So yeah, it says GeForce 2 GTS, GeForce 2 Pro, and they're basically the same card. The, the Pro has faster memory. And also, I think, I'm not sure if there are Pros with 32. My GTS I had back in the day had 32, if I recall. So yeah, card is installed. So, so far, it's working fine. Can also check here, power strip, performance. So it also says GeForce 2 GTS, GeForce 2 Pro. Uh, 200 mesh GPU for merge memory, so that's what what the Pro should run at. And uh, we can run uh, Everest Home. And let's see here. Yeah, so it also says we have a Pro. We know we have PU. Uh, so NV15. 8 before x 64 megabytes of memory. So it's DDR obviously. Uh, and 128 bit bus. 200 megahertz effective 400. Oh, 6.4 gigabytes per second. So yeah. Let's start from Quake 3 here. So that starts fine. And let's see his system. And these are the set settings I use now. So we can run a time demo. This is on a Pentium 3 700 at 933, so it's a little bit of a slow CPU for this card. And we got 153 frames per second, so that's fine. Can also run some 3 d Mark 2000. to remove the test those tests aren't count they don't count for the score only the top three ones so we can run a benchmark here So this uh, with this system we're getting almost 6,000 3D Mark uh, points here, and uh, we should be able to get quite a lot more. I think this card is easily capable of like 11, 10, 11,000 with a Pentium 3 Talatin or Celeron or like an Atom Thunderbird up in the 1.4 to 1.8 gigahertz range. So the CPU a bit slow, but we were artifact free. It seems stable. I ran 3D Mark a few loops before. So yeah, so that's the GeForce 2 Pro uh, serviced, fan needs replacing, but I'm gonna do that once I order some new fans, otherwise it's functional now, no more memory problems, and new caps, yeah, and I have a plan for the system, or this card, I should say. This motherboard should be the next video, assuming it works. It's untested. So I got this from a friend because he wants me to modify some CPUs. This is an old CPU I found in school actually that was stepped on, so all pins were bent. Uh, it's a K62450 deleted. But we need a socket 7 board. I need to test, so he gave me one that is untested. So probably need new caps. Uh, also some mods I want to do to it. A couple of hardware upgrades features and uh, some uh, BIOS flashing needs to be done with a modded BIOS to support the mods we want to he want uh, he wants done to his uh, parts which is 
is uh, he bought some CPUs he wants to do some alterations to. So this should be the next video figured and then hopefully after that we can do video about his CPUs and uh, then I also have a system with a similar board but a uh, much crappier board, really bad, no L2 cache, stuff like that. So the plan is once we're done with all the modding I can, I'm gonna put this in, if, assuming it's not completely broken or something, I'm gonna put this into my my uh, K62 plus 500 system. So. Because that system doesn't have any AGP for starters and it has very poor PCI performance. So yeah, this board will probably be the next video. And the plan is to build a pretty awesome uh, SuperSocket service system. So the plan is to use that graphics card. Uh, some, down, uh, some way down the road here. A few, few videos down the road. Because... Back in the day I had a motherboard very similar to this, but a shuttle one, but it's somewhat identical, same chipset. And I had a GeForce 2 GTS in it. Don't ask me why I bought an expensive card once I could afford it and had a shitty CPU, but that's what I did. I think we're all kind of guilty of mixing and matching part that does, doesn't really match too well. But yeah, I kind of wanted to redo that build. It's not going to be an exact copy, I'm not going to be able to find, find the parts, but it's going to be the same was somewhat faster. So that's the plan. And uh, talking of uh, my friend, he has a competition. He wants to start on our Discord server where he wants to give away a, a Voodoo 3. So if you want to, want to win that card, you can go into our Discord server using the link in the description, TK. And I think the competition should be up in a week or two. So yeah. So feel free to join and uh, keep an eye out on that or ask. So yeah, thank you for watching and have a nice day.